Welcome back everyone. So uh, today we're going to be doing a fairly interesting video and uh, the question may not seem terribly interesting but it'll actually give us a lot of insight into a very interesting property of polynomials in their factored form and differentiating them and it has to do with their roots. So the question asks you to differentiate uh, this polynomial here. And uh, an easy way to differentiate this was would be to make a u substitution. So that would be to let u equal x minus 2 and du equal, well obviously we have dx. So this is why this works, since we if we differentiate this we just get 1. And that's a key idea as, as well. Um, but we're not worried about solving this right now, since it's obviously fairly easy. What we are worried about is, well not worried about, but what we are interested in doing is revealing an interesting property that we have here. So let's recall that the product rule. So let's recall the product rule here. Product rule. So the product rule, if we have, uh, let's say, some n of x, uh, n of x equals. Uh, yeah, n of x is just equal to f f of x times g of x times h of x. Then notice, well, we know that in this case, this is the product rule for three uh, consecutive, uh, three different uh, functions. Notice that this is just, so m prime of x is nothing but f prime of x I'll just call it I'll, I'll just uh, call these functions f g and h just for just to just in the uh, uh, just to excuse brevity so just to yeah so f sorry f prime g h plus f g prime h plus f g h prime and this can be the, the proof of this can be left to uh, an ec left to the reader as an exercise uh, it's really simple it's just basically taking basically f g g prime times h plus f g times h prime and if you do product rule here then you'll just get what we have over there so pretty basic so that's the product rule. And notice that in our case, we have four terms, so we're basically doing this four times. Because we have, obviously we have two of these terms. And notice that since each of these terms, well, if we differentiate each of these terms, then we just get one. So in other words, whenever we're differentiating this, we're essentially taking turns. In a sense, we're taking turns eliminating the terms. So if we have n of x, equals our polynomial up here sorry our our expression up there <coughs> we just get that n prime of x is just is actually and we can write this as our original polynomial so th I'll just call this our polynomial poly original polynomial multiplied well, since we're taking turns eliminating each term, we can just use division here. So in other words, we're just doing, we're eliminating each factor one by one. So x minus, 1 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus, and then we have two of these. So we have two, we have a term with multiplicity 2. 2 over x minus 1. Okay, so that's basically uh, my, my the general idea here, and um, and this has this has some fairly interesting implications. So since our since our polynomial, well, let's just distribute this, and we'll we'll be able to notice something pretty interesting. So if we distribute this, well, so we just have x minus 3 x minus 3 times 
x minus 2 times x minus 1 squared. Now, what we can do is we can just FOIL this out. So we just have 1 over, here I'll just uh, write this out first, minus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1. And if we, if we FOIL this out, well, uh, we get what you would expect. We essentially just get what we just have. So, and it's important to note that it's uh, it's important to note that we, no matter, so due to the product rule and due to this, um, we will since we have multiplicity two here. Uh, if we use the product rule here, since we're eliminating what each term one by one, right? Well, since there are two of these, so we just have x minus one, x minus one. We will always have at least one of these, at least one of these um, in each term. So notice that when we FOIL this, we'll be able to easily factor out an x minus one. So let's 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 show that. So we have x minus two, x minus one squared plus. Uh, did I do that correctly? I I don't think I did. Yeah, I did that wrong. Oh wait, did I? No, I did that correctly. Plus x minus 3 x and then x minus 1 squared and finally plus, or not finally, plus, um, well, we can just write this as uh, 2 2 times x minus 1, right, and then squared. So that's all we have. Or if we just write this as two terms to make it more clear, we just have, well, x minus 1, uh, right, x minus 1, uh, so plus, oh yeah, it wouldn't be squared, so just take that back, plus x minus 1, and this is just 2x minus 1, so just, just to be more clear there, delete, just going to delete this quickly, oh, I actually deleted a parenthesis, uh, so there we go, and let me just make sure that was correct, yeah, okay, so there we go. Yeah, and as we can see, we can just easily factor out an x minus one. So, so this is uh, this is just x minus one uh, times. Well, we just have x minus two. X minus one, and we go on, and we know this will work. So the interesting implication of this is that, well, we notice that x minus 1 is always a root of this expression here. And notice that we can kind of infer, some, we can kind of make some kind of conjecture here without first proving it. And we can go into the proof in a second. Or maybe in part 2, I don't know. And we notice that, so here's, here's a property. Property. Uh, factored uh, a factored a root uh, of a polynomial with multiplicity multiplicity equal to, I'll just abbreviate this, equal to, well, we'll just call it, I'll just call it multiplicity, uh, multiplicity c, I'll just call it multiplicity 
at, mm, I'll call it C. Uh, the, the derivative, derivative of that polynomial a root polynomial with multiple polynomial and polynomial uh, has a root has root equals has a root equal to uh, equal to multiplicity or root with multiplicity equal to c minus one. So that's a property, and that's a very useful property. It's very powerful. So if we go on, we can do a quick proof of this. So. Let's do that. And we're going to use the fundamental theorem of <coughs> algebra to help us. So the fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, let me see. Can I track how long this has been going? Oh, 11 minutes. Theorem of algebra. And this just tells us that every polynomial can be factored into its roots, so it can be factored in can be ha factored into its roots. So, for example, x minus r one. Uh, oh well, don't, we can't forget our constant on the outside. We'll call it a. X minus r one. To the, uh, I suppose to the, uh, n one. I'll call it m one. I'll call it actually C, C1 times X minus R2, C, C2, all the, all the way to X minus R, K, C, K. And um, uh, it's important to note that uh, these, it's important to note that um, uh, all polynomials will have or if you can't factor a polynomial into its real roots, that doesn't mean it doesn't have roots. It, it it means that it has imaginary roots, and those have to still be considered. Uh, so normally, if you learn in if, what normally what you learn in high school, normally or middle school, um, you will learn that well, uh, blah blah blah. This polynomial can't be factored if uh, the part under the square root. Um, if the section under the square root, you know, in the in the quadratic formula, is less than zero, um, and that just means it'll have imaginary roots. But all polynomials can be factored into some combination of its roots. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the fundamental theorem of algebra, and I mean, it's not it it just will help us uh, know that this is the way that we're writing this is correct, and it generalizes to all polynomials. Uh, so we'll have our polynomial, we'll have some polynomial, which is just what we have up there. So a times x minus r1 to the c1, and you get the idea, x minus rk ck. Okay? And uh, we'll use the same kind of differentiability method that we used up, up there uh, that has to do with the product rule. So, so if we take the, the derivative, derivative, this is just, well, our polynomial, so a times x minus r1, c1, x minus r, k, ck times, well, basically our multiplicity, or c1 over x minus r1, 
that's exactly what we had over there. Plus, all the way to CK X minus RK. And it's important to note that um, it's important to note that uh, K K here for for all I for all I uh, base okay I'll write it like this for all I uh, not equal to one R I is not equal to one and that's trivial. So it's important to note that the this this doesn't have any this th has nothing to do with this. This has no, this has doesn't have the same root as R one. In other words, R one is not equal to R k for R i for all uh, for all uh, for all i. This isn't equal to R k. So okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And same thing applies here and here. So if we distribute this. This is, so if we distribute this, we just get, well, if we multiply this over here, then let's see, um, well, we'll have a C1, of course, uh, let's see, so we'll have, we'll have a C1, so we have A times, and then we'll have C1, so A C1, and so we have a C1 here. And then we we basically since this is also x minus r one and this is x minus r one, well we're getting rid of one x minus r one, so it's just x minus r one to the c minus c one minus one, so times x minus r one to the c one minus one, and then times well some kind of polynomial here, but crucial thing is that it will not have anything to do with this root here. So times some polynomial, poly, and then plus, and then if we distribute this here, so right here, uh, well, let's see. So we'll still have this root here, since this has nothing to do with our root here. So this is kind of an informal way of doing this, but I feel like it's the most intuitive way. So a c k times x minus r uh, x minus r1 c1 okay and and times some other so polynomial 1 and then some other polynomial polynomial 2 again this is informal <laughs> but the point is that we notice that we can easily factor out an a c an x, an x to the minus r1 uh we can easily factor out an x minus r1 to the c1 minus 1. So we can do that, and that's what we've shown. So we've just proven that we can easily, that x minus r1 to the c1 minus 1 will always be a root of this polynomial, the, the uh, derivative of our polynomial up here. So if we just factor that out, we just get x minus r1 to the c1 minus 1 times and then we'll just have a times c uh, times our some polynomial here. The stuff in here doesn't really matter. Well, it does because we've shown since this has no relation with our root x minus r1 to some power. Well, this means that we won't have any any more of these roots. So that means that because if we did, then we wouldn't we would we wouldn't have exactly we wouldn't be able to exactly have um, what uh a um a fa a uh a root with exactly multiplicity c1 c minus 1 so that's the crucial bit so we've shown that these polynomials will not have any any multiples of x minus r1 times some polynomial plus some stuff here we don't have to worry about that but this is the crucial bit so uh this is uh the informal proof but hopefully it would it was a bit intuitive so uh, have a nice day and goodbye.